Good morning, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome everyone uh, to my Art Speak today. Uh, I would just like to um, explain my journey uh, on how I become an artist. Uh, but first, I would like to introduce to you, kasama uh, ko my my wife, my cheerleader. <laughs> Uh, she's also a visual artist. Uh, she's Plet Bolipata. And um, she's the one who made all the uh, animal sculptures right in front of the Rizal Library. So she did that uh, piece called Imagination. Uh, okay, so... Um, okay, to start, um, I'm a full-time visual artist. Um, I was born in Santa Ana, Manila, and I grew up in Mandaluyong. My interest in the visual arts started early. At the age of 11, uh, I was um, um, introduced to a painter and an art teacher in Quezon City, and his name is Mr. Fernando Sena. And Mr. Sena would take us to uh, outdoor painting trips. So this one is um, in Fort Santiago. So, Bali and kami, we would paint outdoors on the spot, and, uh, and then the whole day will just finish one work. So dito, um, kasi si Mr. Sena is very encouraging as a teacher. Um, lagi siyang binibigay, binibigyan niya ako ng mga notes and uh, photos and then he would write at the back, someday you will be my master. No? So, and so, uh, so Plet, no, my wife decided to, to make a collage no, for us wearing Jedi outfits. No, kasi si Mr. Sena, I consider him as my master Yoda. <laughs> okay, so dito sa, sa work na to, uh, dito sa photo, I'm holding an early work. Hmm. Uh, this one, uh, ito yung painting na ginawa ko. I was um, 12 years old. Uh, this is oil on canvas. This is only 9 by 12. Uh, you, this is a view of Pasig River. You can see on the middle, on the horizon, is the Jones Bridge, and on the right is the po post office building. Um, dito sa class ni Mr. Sena, he doesn't teach yung the uh, so-called children's art. No? Um, yung teaching niya sa mga young kids, parang ano na rin kami, we're taking uh, fine arts. No? So very academic, classical yung teaching. So this was a year later nung nag-start ako ng workshop sa kanya and I was already uh, copying his style no uh, kasi si Mr. Sena he's an impressionist okay so yung brush stroke niya talagang uh, ginagaya ko talaga so, no yung mga broad broad brush strokes and then tinuturo kasi ni Mr. Sena lahat ng mga uh, techniques no y using different materials from pencil pen and ink pastel and watercolor and then eventually oil tapos sa mga subject matters he would teach yung mga uh, still life landscape animal um, portraits and figure and then dung nag uh, nasa advanced class na niya ako um, i moved towards yung uh, drawing the human figure. Mas, mas love ko yung figure drawing kasi for me, it's challenging. And then during my high school days, uh, he, Mr. Sena encouraged us to look at art books, go to galleries and museums. Tapos sa Philippine art, um, I discovered that I was influenced dun sa national artist for painting uh, natin na si Carlos Botong Francisco who's a muralist from Angono. So I was imitating his style uh, in this period no, during my high school my high school days. But the subject matter um, you will notice ano pa rin siya, yung rural uh, idyllic life na very nostalgic no, nung mga panahon ng mga uh, dun sa, sa provinces. No? Uh, so this one is yung favorite medium ko using oil pastel. No? Uh, very idyllic yung subject matter. No? Uh, tingnan nyo, pati yung expression ng mga animals, pati yung kalabaw ko dito, guwapo, pogi. <laughs> Ayan. Tapos I, love, I also love the, um, drawing and painting uh, dogs. Uh, and then... Uh, 
nung after graduation ng high school, I entered UP Diliman Fine Arts and then I majored in painting. Uh, before I entered UP, um, I thought I was already an artist kasi yung idea na if you put an object in front of you and then you copy it realistically, tapos you can create compositions from memory. I thought that was already what an artist is. Pero nung pumasok ako sa fine art sa UP, parang na culture shock ako kasi yung mga teachers ko na uh, western trained, no? Parang hindi lang important sa isang estudyante o sa isang artist yung skills mo in in drawing or in painting. Um, they also encourage you to go into theories and concepts, no? Yung kung papa, how you interpret a particular subject or a particular form. So yung mga early plates ko dito, uh, I was I became a student of um, yung ating prominent conceptual artist si Roberto Bobby Chabet. Uh, he would ask us to make collages. Tapos he would choose uh, one collage. And then he would ask us to translate it into uh, oil on canvas. So, dito sa collage na to, um, I used a photograph of my, a group photo of my mother, yung kanilang field trip nung late 1950s. Uh, yung mother ko nandun sa upper uh, left hand corner. No? Tapos nung sinabmit ko dun sa ano ko, sa professor ko, ang comment lang yan dito, sabi niya. Para lang mukhang watercolor kasi yung material, yung pagkakagawa ko kasi dun sa photorealist work, masyadong manipis. No? Eh pagka gusto niya, yung, yung, if you use oil, you have to use the pl plasticity of the material, no? yung, yung thickness nung, nung paint. So maraming, marami akong mga experiments na ginawa no? uh, during my fine arts days. Um, we would uh, study modern art history. Uh, tapos, um, kasi during that time in the uh, late eight, mid and late eighties, wala pang internet. So our source of uh, yung yung knowledge uh, are books and magazines. So in so dahil ano ko, I became curious. I would go to the cultural centers of different embassies sa Thomas Jefferson Cultural Library, sa British Council, and then Gitti Institute to look at uh, foreign art books and the current uh, international art trends in different art centers of the world. So, during that time, uh, meron kasing revival ng uh, figurative art um, sa New York, London, Berlin. Um, tapos ano yan? It was all happening at the same time and then they call it uh, neo expressionism so medyo ano ako na attract ako dun sa dun sa movement na yon kasi uh, it was energetic you know very urban tapos naka relate ako kasi i i was also um, a city boy no tapos um, it was also a reflection of my love for music no mahilig kasi ako makinig nung ng ano no ng rock Tapos, uh, I was also a guitarist for for a college band. Tapos, um, yung, ano kasi, yung music kasi doon, masarap yung culture na nandun ka sa art school eh. Kasi yung mga classmate mo, you would all um, talk about, not just about painting or, or art, but also music. So, ano siya, parang it was like a, a new drug, no? Darating yung mga kaklase mo sa classroom, tapos may daladalang cassette tape. sabi nila, Emong, pakinggan mo to. <laughs> Yan. Tapos, andun yung mga rock music. So, we would listen to uh, mga punk bands, uh, Ramones, Talking Heads, uh, mga Sex Pistols, and different um, rock bands. Tapos, ang ganda kasi, tapos ano siya, yung themes kasi niya, yung mga non-conformity, police brutality, anti-establishment, no? Uh, maganda yung mga teams na nitatakel. Parang ang layo dun sa, sa nung, nung time na nandun ako sa Mandaluyong, na yung mga kaklasiko, we're just 
all listening to Air Supply, Eagles, <laughs> yun, yung mga, mga pop, <laughs> pop songs. Tapos, um, yan, ito yung band, my band, na pangalan, Is It Safe? No? <laughs> uh, ano siya, yung line na yon came from the movie Marathon Man. Tapos, um, yan, kung kilala nyo, that's also visual artist si Romeo Lee. Tapos yung house na to, it turned out, This is the ancestral house uh, of Plet Balipata. No, hindi pa kami magkakilala nito. So, parang that was uh, fate. <laughs> okay. Um, so yan, uh, nung na- nakwento ko na sa inyo, yung, yung uh, art scene kasi nung that time, uh, we're all geared towards uh, yung mga influences sa uh, Western art movements. No? Uh, na wala talagang reflection of what's happening in the society. But during that time, kasi yung uh, political situation sa, sa Manila and the Philippines were really uh, violent. No? So, nung uh, 83, there was the assassination of uh, Ninoy Aquino. Tapos yung student leader namin sa student council, si uh, Leon Alejandro was also assass- assassinated and he was only 26. No? Very brilliant uh, young student. Tapos, uh, and then also, Mindyola massacre happened. So, I was painting my entry piece for an art competition, yung AAP, and then nag-flash sa news yung yung ang... Uh, yung nangyari sa Mendiola. And then, sudden, suddenly, parang it dawned on me, parang, what's the um, relevance of what I'm painting? So, yung, from that time on, parang yun yung naging uh, breakthrough to depict mga mga social happenings dito sa, sa country natin. So, eto, naging autobiographical. etong uh, painting na to, Um, I base this image from my baptism. No, so yung baby don with the chubby cheeks, <laughs> that's me. Tapos yun yung yung mami, yung nanay ko, my auntie, and then yung uh, mikarkarga sa akin, yung ninang ko, at yung ninong ko, and my two brothers. So during this time, meron na kung parang mga uh, contrast, no, yung yung peaceful and the uh, yung yung violent happenings so nandun yung mga riot uh, policemen mga marchers mga activists tapos yung military choppers and right at the back yung um, alsa altar uh, if you can see there's this latin phrase yung ora pro nobis uh, it's uh, it means pray for us I did this in 1990, and a year before, yung 1989, si Lino Broca also made a film uh, with this uh, this title. Ayun. I did this in 1988. Uh, itong entry ko na to, it's an oil on canvas. Yeah, it won second prize in the Metro Bank uh, Annual Painting Competition uh, oil category. Uh, ito, uh, dahil kasi yung politicization namin ng mga kaibigan ko uh, in this painting I depicted the Marlboro label and then I changed the the text into regimen tapos yung yung uh, parang seat that was the parang seat of power tapos dito sa foreground yung mga dogs guarding the throne and then uh, dito sa foreground Uh, ito yung mga inaapi no yung mga figures na na nagugutom ng no? mga walang damit no so during this time uh, kasi wala kaming if you're a young artist uh, based in Manila if you don't have uh, a name or, or you're not established yung mga galleries at that time they won't accept you or, or give you a slot to have an exhibition. So, to gain uh, recognition, uh, kami ng mga kaibigan ko, kinakarir namin yung mga art competition. Sali lang kami ng sali. Kasi, uh, gusto namin na uh, we get to be known and then yung yung prize money niya, it helps us no? for uh, to buy more materials. No? Uh, yun. Tapos, uh, in 1992, 
uh, uh, sumali ulit ako sa Metro Bank competition, uh, yung painting ko, binase ko yung interior sa, uh, if you would recognize, ito yung main uh, living room sa pinto. Ano? And then I just made um, uh, para very simple family reunion. No? Uh, and then I create, uh, I compose different figures. Tapos if you would notice on the left side, uh, there's a painting hanging on the wall that is uh, Juan Luna's painting entitled Tampuhan. Kasi during that time, uh, may yung si, yung the owner of Pinto, si Dr. Hoven Kwanang, owns this reproduction. So I copied the, the exact painting of Luna. I, I incorporated it on this work. Tapos dito na nag-umpisa yung composition ko na parang fish eye lens because I also love uh, photography. So dito parang ito na yung naging uh, breakthrough at yung direction ko in uh, what I would paint later on. So then again, it won uh, second prize in the Metro Bank competition. Uh, tapos dun sa Antipolo with my group, yung Saling Pusa, we would uh, hold exhibitions na uh, may mga themes. So this one, uh, based on a kundiman uh, paint, uh, song. Uh, ang title nito is Berheng Walang Dambana. Dibirmo, from rock, punk music to Victor Wood. <laughs> and then, uh, during this period, I was already uh, accepting mga commissioned works. So this one, oh, sorry. Uh, this was commissioned by the writer Hilda Cordero Fernando uh, for her lit, uh, study room. Uh, tapos ito yung mga subjects ko of uh, children. No? Ang title nito, uh, Gulong. So I was already painting mga uh, images from personal experience and uh, observations from everyday life. Uh, tapos lahat ng paintings ko dumadaan sa studies no very traditional no so on my sketchbook i would do uh, several studies no para pag-aralan ko yung composition kasi uh, these are just based from memory no so gagawin ko yung mga poses ng mga figures so this work is called night shift and this is the final painting no um this is the time dun sa ed sa wala pang MR, uh, MRT no yung flyover sa ed sa crossing so yung mga yung mga yung mga women no working late at night tapos yun marami mga mga men staring at at the women in my first solo show i was preparing uh this is my uh studio in mandaluyong uh Finally, yung father ko, binigyan na rin na ako ng space kasi yung bahay daw namin, dumidilim na because of my paintings. <laughs> so, binigyan na ako ng space dun sa compound namin. So, you would see, ito yung mga paintings na piniprepare ko for my solo show. Uh, there's a uh, work on uh, in progress uh, dun sa easel. Tapos dun sa floor, yung titled Kandong, yung Mother and Child, uh, I based the cloth of... Uh, the woman, the mother, no, hiniram ko yung duster nung nanay ko, yung yellow, tapos yun yung ano ko, ginawa kong uh, reference. So this photo was taken by also an artist friend, si Tony Leano. So itong study na to, uh, ito yung title, the Kumot. No? So this is pencil on paper, and then this is the final piece. Uh, during this time, nung mga 90s, uh, uh, I went back to volunteer work, no? teaching uh, art to street children, orphans, and uh, mga juvenile delinquents uh, from uh, Mandaluyong, Makati, uh, Quezon, um, Bicol, and Mindanao. So, nung, uh, uh, during my volunteer work, dito ko nakita, nakuha yung mga inspirations ko for uh, my solo exhibition. Uh, ang title nito, Kumot, nakita ko siya sa isang flyover sa Cubao. And then, uh, I titled the, my first solo show, Aki. Aki means, A-K-I, it means child in Bicol. 
So this is also one, uh, another work from my solo show titled Hating Kapatid. Jaga, nag-share lang sila sa, sa bangko. Tapos, uh, yung, I wasn't doing parang straight lines, no? Dun sa, sa work, no? Parang, uh, iniwasan ko yung mechanical approach into painting. So I would use mga, mga curve lines, no? Parang, uh, almost similar to what uh, Vincent Van Gogh is doing. And then, uh, almost every year, I would uh, do solo shows. No? Uh, this is a pen and ink study of um, the title piece called Gabay. No? Uh, ito, nakasakay ako sa bus sa EDSA. Tapos, paglingon ko sa bintana, uh, akala ko nak nakakita ko ng apparition. No? <laughs> but the... Uh, uh, Jesus Christ is actually a wooden sculpture pero pinaupo niya sa sa ano sa driver seat no katabi niya no, nagulat na lang ako uh, yun nga napansin ko wooden sculpture lang pala kasi walang walang kamay ang ang habit ko kasi if uh, I'm not uh, painting uh, I always draw every day no uh, hindi ako tumitigil no uh, pag hindi ako nagpe-paint uh, nagdo-drawing lang ako, I jot down notes, doodles, and uh, mga sketches na from memory, from uh, everyday life. No? Uh, ito, ito yung uh, slide no? sa Castillejos, no? do sa park. And then, uh, this was a study for uh, a work, no? yung 10th Decalogue ni Apolinario Mabini. Tapos dito sa, sa sketches ko, pati yung mga poses ng mga kamay, no? dinodrawing ko rin. Uh, pag, kasi minsan ano rin ako, I just work alone in my studio. So pag uh, kailangan ko ng model, minsan tumitingin na lang ako sa salamin, tinitingnan ko yung mga poses, pati yung mga kamay ko. Ano? Kaya lang nga, kung baka merong ibang tao na makakita sa akin, baka akala nila nasisiraan ako ng ulo dahil panay ang post ko sa harapan ng salamin. <laughs> but actually, I was uh, acting the, the poses of my subjects. So, this is the, my desk in Samba, uh, Sambales studio, uh, which I recreated uh, in the next room uh, kung saan yung exhibits ko. Uh, tapos ito yung mga different mediums I play with. Uh, charcoal on paper, uh, pencil, graphite, and then this is an early uh, pen and ink sketch. Maliit lang ito, you can see the original. Uh, this is called Desaparacidos. No? And then uh, this is pastel or chalk pastel on uh, cream colored paper. Tapos meron din ako mga watercolor pieces. Me. Mga works ako, um, kasi yun nga very traditional na I translate studies from paintings. But uh, I also believe dun sa drawings na it can stand on its own. No? Uh, kahit na hindi siya gawing painting, no? kahit yung, yung drawing pa lang, ano na talaga siya. It's already a work of art. Uh, itong piece na to, ito medyo comical, humorous. Nung... Uh, nagpapagawa kami ng bahay sa Mandaluyong, yung electrician namin. No, nakita ko minsan, sabi ko nagpapalit ng bumbilya sa, sa dingding. Tapos, eh wala siyang mahawakan doon sa step ladder, wala siyang mapagpatungan nung, nung bulb. Sinubo na lang niya yung, yung bulb sa, sa kanyang bibig. No? Parang very ano pa rin, yung in, pagka-ingenious ng mga, mga Filipinos. So, I continued uh, painting, no? uh, and then my uh, sempre to sustain myself, uh, my source of livelihood was I was, you know, do, teaching uh, non-formal art workshops, tapos doing illustrations for magazines uh, and mga books, no? and then designing mga posters, graphic designs. Uh, tapos in the year 1994, uh, I got an award from the Cultural Center of the Philippines, yung 13 Artist Award. So, based on uh, yung na-produce ko for the past five years. And then, uh, required ka na to work on new pieces for the awards. No? So, ito yung uh, ginawa ko. Uh, this is called, this is uh, called Pamilyang Mentol. No? 
uh, I did four pieces no, of this this work. No, medyo very minimal lang yung mga mga colors. No, black, red, white, and ochre. Uh, siguro isang reason din dito kasi ito lang yung colors na nabib na kaya kong bilhin. <laughs> Tapos this is an acrylic uh, oh, a big work. It's called Estribo. Uh, yung mga scenes then from City Life. Tapos, uh, uh, I got an artist residency sa ka Casa San Miguel sa San Antonio, Sambales. Uh, dun sa background, makita nyo yung fasad ng San Miguel uh, Casa. Tapos, dun ako nagpipaint sa kabilang bahay. And then, yung anak ng caretaker, nakaupo siya sa tabi ko. And then, I decided to uh, paint him also. Tapos, ang title nito, Pangarap, kasi yung, ba yung boy, he was holding a toy... Uh, chopper no parang ano siya metaphor for yung dreams no to to go someplace else ayan ito yung study ng Santo Entierro lugawan ni San Pedro uh, ewan ko kung may makaka-relate din sa inyo kasi during the 70s meron kaming favorite TV show it's called John and Marcia no <laughs> yung uh, yung yung TV show na yon uh, yung si Dolphy yung husband niya uh, came from a poor family. Tapos si Nida Blanca came from a rich family. Tapos uh, bumalik na lang sa akin yun kasi yung si, si John, uh, pag natutulog kasi siya, yung ginagamit niyang unan, yung mga frying pan, yung mga kaldero, pag natutulog siya dun sa bahay nila. Tapos, uh, so I created this piece. Tapos, uh, ano siya, yung parang double purpose. No? Yung uh, food cart niya na tindahan ng lugaw sa gabi, tulugan tapos yung bowl nung uh, porridge yun yung kanyang uh, pillow and then i went to the the market tapos i bought a linoleum yung plastic na binabalot sa sa lamesa tapos i copied the the design and then this is also a favorite piece of mine called entablado uh, actually, parang may pagka, ano din siya eh, uh, autobiographical. Kasi siyempre, nung bata ka, pag nagwawalis ka ng ano, yung using walis tambo, pagka gusto mo na i-entertain yung sarili mo, gagamitin mo na yung walis as a, as a guitar. No? So ito, nag-break siya, nung lilinis niya yung track niya. But his only audience is the dog. No? And this dog was based on my my dog, no? si, si Milky. This work, Kasi marami akong paintings na yung ang team kasi yung Filipinos have this penchant for being uh, yung penchant for improvisation and uh, being resourceful no pagka yung hindi mo ma-afford yung isang bagay you will just create your own no parang punk attitude pa rin DIY do, do it yourself so ito Yung mga kalalakihan, uh, instead of you know the, uh, buying real barbell, no, they would recycle old cans. In this case, yung Baguio cooking oil, uh, bubusan nila ng cement and then they put a metal tube, barbell na. No? Tapos yung uh, Baguio oil kasi nito, meron silang tagline, yung nakasulat dun sa can, nakalagay, order ni Mrs. Kaya yung title din itong painting na to, Order ni Mrs. Kung kailangan, magpalaki ka muna ng katawan. <laughs> Tapos ito, uh, back to school gupit. No? Uh, muna notice nyo, madilim lang. Nakalagay dyan yung, ito yung pangalan ng bar barbershop. Eh. Ba back to school gupit. And then yung price, on, ta on the upper right hand, it's 20 pesos. No? Uh, so parang recorder chronicler din ako ng ng life no so you would notice na makikita niyo yung difference Ay, yung yung haircut noon 20 pesos lang ngayon magbigay ka ng 40 pesos tip sa barbershop galit pa <laughs> so ito yung uh, this is my studio in Sambales no? uh, sorry so ito yung schedule ko in painting parang uh, ano rin um Office hours. After breakfast, from 8 to 12, I paint. And then, lunch break, tapos konting siesta. And then, in the afternoon, I paint again, hanggang sundown. Tapos, pagdating sa gabi, I just, uh, uh, you know, uh, rest, relax, and watch net Netflix with my wife. <laughs>
So, ito yung mga pen and inks na uh, may study for yung cold huling hapunan. So, I copied uh, Leonardo da Vinci's uh, Last Supper in Monochrome. Tapos, ito yung mga pages ko sa sketchbooks. Uh, ito yung mga mga scenes, mga summers ng mga pamangkin namin sa Sambales. And then, uh, this is the uh, final painting called Tired, Tired Swing. Uh, naging book cover ito nung teacher dito sa Ateneo na was also my sister-in-law, si Rica Bolipata Santos, yung book niyang Naval. And then, this is the pen and ink study for yung work ko sa St. Luke's Global City. Yun. Tapos, kahit saan ako mag punta, I always bring my sketchbooks. No? Kaya pagka meron akong free time, nagdo-drawing ako. Kahit na minsan yung mga friends ko na binibisita ko sa, sa hospital, <laughs> yan. Kunyari, hindi ka naman gagalaw eh, di ba? <laughs> so, do-drawing na lang kita. So, yan. <laughs> so, yan, ginagawa ko din sila ng, ng sketch. No? Pero pagkatapos naman ito, happy sila. Tapos, uh, itong work na to, this is... Uh, biographical piece kasi nung 1991 nagkaroon ng malakas na earthquake so i was in the third floor of uh, the main library in UP tapos apat kami uh, we were having a meeting for a show at the CCP uh, nung suddenly naramdaman namin na nagkakaroon ng earthquake so the the building was shaking so ang instinct namin is to go under the table pero Nung nakatingin ako dun sa, sa, sa floor, ano, I wasn't closing my eyes. No? Talagang hindi, 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 nag, hindi kumurap kasi para nakita ko talaga yung floor na it was waving. No? Ganun pala yun, yung pagka-earthquake. And then parang nasa mind mo na in a few seconds makikita mo na you'll be in the ground floor. No? <laughs> Kaya yan, pagka earthquake drill, uh, ano ko nakagad to? Profile picture ko nakagad sa Facebook. <laughs> And then the next piece, uh, ito yung ginagawa ko, called Three Huggers. Um, sorry. Nung, uh, when I started painting in the 90s, hindi na ako nagpipaint on white ground. No? Laging may neutral color, uh, gray, brown, uh, blue, sometimes red or purple. Kasi pag, if you're going to paint on white canvas, uh, para siyang psychological na you want to uh, fill in the entire canvas with paint no pero dito you will take your time you will paint slow tapos pag may mga bright colors ka lumilitaw na kaagad on neutral colors so this is the pen and ink study and then uh, this is the final piece called three huggers parang it's a, a exhibition on the uh, environment tapos itong uh, work na to uh, this is called the circle game. Uh, sa Sambales kasi, dun sa mango farm sa San Antonio, uh, tuwing hapon, every 5 o'clock in the afternoon, there are small birds, no? Na parang local name yata nun. Pero iba-iba yung tawag nun eh. It's also called balinsasaw. Maliliit siya na ibon, tapos parang sparrow. Tapos yung, yung uh, tail niya parang two, uh, pointed. Tapos umiikot lang sila around the farm. And then, one afternoon, nakita ko ang baba nung lipad nila. Tapos malapit talaga sa almost close to the ground. Tapos sinubukan kong lapitan. No? Uh, sabi ko, titingnan ko kung lalayo sila. So I was walking very slowly towards the, the birds. Tapos uh, bigla kong napapwesto in the middle of the, the birds. No? Hindi sila lumayo. Tapos siguro feeling nila parang hindi ako threatening. No? Tapos so umiikot lang sila. Iba yung, yung parang experience. No? Parang napaka metaphysical. So I decided parang magandang gawin siyang, siyang painting. No? Uh, parang nagkaroon ako ng ano dun, Batman moment. Pero hindi lang bats. <laughs> Small birds. So etong work na to, uh, this is a big piece, 5 feet by 8 feet. Uh, it is now in a uh, collection of Pinto Art Museum. And then, uh, siguro bago ko ipakita yung my last uh, work na ipapakita, I, um, I love doing uh, large pieces. No? Kasi mas challenging sa akin yung mga 
malalaki siguro dahil na rin yung sa experience ko being a, a muralist. Pero there are also pieces kasi na although hindi ko naman sinasabi na all work has to be large or, or, or big kasi uh, may magugulat tayo yung mga small pieces, yung sila work nila Vermeer, nila Dali. When you go to a museum and see the original works, maliliit lang. Yung persistence of memory ni, ni Dali, yung Salvador Dali, yung famous painting niya, yung merong melted uh, clock, tapos maraming mga ants, maliit lang yun. Pero pag tiningnan mo siya, akala mo malaki. So, um, there was an image playing in my mind since I lived in San Antonio, Zambales. Uh, tuwing nagpupunta kasi ako dun sa dagat, sa, bi sa beach, uh, it's a fisher folk community. Tapos maraming mga kalalakihan nakaupo sa, sa beach. Tapos nakaabang lang. So, akala ko parang papahangin lang sila, nakatingin lang sa, sa dagat. Tapos, at uh, uh, nalaman ko, they were waiting for bankas to arrive. No? Pagkatapos mamang uh, mangisda. Tapos ang gagawin nila, uh, parang this is the parang concept bayanihan. Tulong-tulong silang bubuhatin nila yung, yung bangka out of the water and then they would park the boat dun sa, sa beach. No? Tapos, pagkatapos nun, yung uh, mangingisda, bibigyan yung bawat bumuhat ng ng bangka, ng one piece of uh, fish, parang ano nila, incentive. No? So siguro, yun na yung ulamin nila. No? Tapos, anyan, lagi ko siya nakikita, and then I was just waiting for the right time para i-paint siya. Tapos, nung 2011, uh, yung close na yung gallery na yun, Manila Contemporary, it is owned by, uh, ito na yung uh, charcoal study niya. It is owned by a Malaysian gallerist. Uh, na meron silang concept for a show entitled Monumental. Uh, they were they invited 10 visual artists, tapos wala silang team na binigay, and then wala ring size limitation. They just gave us the size of the wall. So, sabi ko, pwede ko nang gawin dito yung malaking painting. So, what I did, was a 7.5 feet by 15 feet uh, painting. No? Uh, siguro ito, almost as uh, parang ganito, long as this, this wall. No? Cash, exacto lang siya dun sa studio ko. No? Madagdagan lang ng one foot lampas na sa, sa pintuan ng, ng studio ko. So, ito ang title nito, uh, Pag-ahon. No? Uh, parang ito yung concept ko nung yung bayanihan no? of uh, yung working together. No? Uh, ito, um, na-exhibit siya ulit dun sa Metropolitan Museum of Manila na work. So, uh, yun, hopefully, I can still, uh, you know, create uh, this kind of works no? in my uh, career as an artist. No? Sabi nga namin ni Pret, parang hanggang, hanggang tumanda kami, no? uh, ito pa rin yung, yung gusto namin gawin. We still want to, to create and uh, make uh, great works of art. So, before I finish this talk, um, let me finish. I uh, you know, give you a quote from uh, Hippocrates. Uh, I wrote this in my 2013 sketchbook. Uh, it's called um, Ars Longa uh, Vita Brevis. It means life is short, but art is long. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Sir Emong. Uh, we will now be opening the floor for questions from the audience. Reactions. Uh, hello, I'm Connie Ladrido from Chinese Studies. Uh, when I'm thinking about your drawings, uh, so when you have this perfect drawing and you wanted it to, to translate into an oil painting, mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking about like what would be the triggers that would make you change a bit some elements of when you are doing the painting. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, 
I guess it will just um, you know depend on the the composition, no? Because there are we did studies, no, on how to compose a painting. Na yung the the flow, no? Na parang kait ako when I look at the the piece, no? Parang yung 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 direction, no, no, ng ng mata ko would continuously continuously flow no uh, tapos pati yung mga i guess yung mga elements no yung mga just the basic elements nung nung uh, diagonal shapes and the horizons na tapos yung isa pa parang kailangan hindi siya tangent no yung minsan yung mga lines na hindi siya tumatapat sa ibang uh, elements no at saka Siyempre, ano na rin, the, the reason for changing is the yung visual impact. No? Uh, it's also kind of uh, parang like editing. No? Sa, when you write a piece no, in literature, pagka mayroong mga ibang mga, mga, mga words doon or lines that are not important, you, you omit that one. Uh -oh. Tapos... Uh, Yung isa pa rin, um, kaya rin ako gumagawa ng study, I, uh, gusto ko rin i-mention na I don't uh, use grid to enlarge my my works. Kasi gusto ko when uh, I work on a painting, gusto ko meron pang room for for changes at saka hindi siya uh, mechanical. No? Actually, nakalimutan ko nga din i-mention kanina yung etong dala ko yung mga actual ano ko eh, sketchbooks. No? Uh, nung college kasi ako, yung professor ko dun sa fine arts, si Nestor Olarte Vinluan, he was uh, mentioning this uh, black book. No? They called it the black book. And nung, during the 90s, yung ganitong klaseng sketchbook na nakabind, wala ka pa mabibili, mabibili sa art supply store. So, syempre, parang uh, kailangan maging resourceful ka. So, kami ng mga classmates ko, ay mga, kaib mga artist friends ko, uh, we would buy mga uh, bl blank pages of Oslo paper. Uh, ako naman, nasobrahan. One rim yung binili ko. <laughs> Sabi ko, para ano na lang, para marami. Kaya lang, nahirapan, ang, ang bigat lang. No? Uh, yun lang the problem with this. Uh, kasi hindi pa kami conscious nun sa mga uh, acid-free paper or yung mga conservation uh, materials. So, ito, pinalagyan ko pa ng pangalan ko sa cover. Yung mga sketches ko. So, ito yung mga notes. No? No, lahat, bali, ito, pinupuno ko yung, yung sketchbook ko. Kaya, when I go to my studio, Sige, pahawak na lang. So, when I go to my studio, ito yung mga sketchbooks na to. Ito yung mga, mga binabalikan ko. No? Uh, actually, may mga iba kong mga paintings na kahit yung mga five years ago no? o ten years ago, bubuklatin ko tong sketchbook ko. And then, I would see uh, a detail, no? a thumbnail sketch. Tapos, makikita ko, oh, parang magandang, ano, this, uh, this can be a... a painting no for a co composition for a big work no so yan kaya pag pupunta ako sa studio hindi ako parang blank no na laging merong uh, ideas for painting at saka laging ano excited to to paint no tapos uh, yun na nung nagkaroon na ng mga new material itong mga sketchbook uh yan ito na yung mga yung mga sketches ko. Yeah, so, I just keep them. No? Uh, nakakapanghinayang lang, hindi ko siya pinipilas yung pages. So, kaya yung dito sa exhibit ko, uh, yung mga nasa monitor are uh, videos of my sketchbooks. Ayan. That's it. Morning. My first question po is, who are your foreign uh, artists that you like at the moment? And also, Philippine artists. That's my first question. Okay. Nung, at the moment, hanggang ngayon, uh, kasi dahil nga mahilig ako sa figurative art, nung pagdating sa mga expressionist, there's this parang movement called new objectivity. 
Nandiyan yung sila, my favorite were the Europeans and the Germans. Sila, Otto Dix. Tapos yung mga expressionists like Max Beckman, Kathy Colwitz. No? Yung talagang mga expressionists. Tapos, um, also the Mexican triumvirate muralist, si Diego Rivera, uh, Jose Clemente Orozco, and uh, David Sikiros. Tapos, um, yung actually nga nung kinukonvince ako ng wife ko si Pleto to, to go to the states uh, ang binanggit ko sa kanya sabi ko parang uh, mas gusto ko ayo no i want to go to mexico to see the murals of uh, my favorite uh, foreign artist pero sabi niya if you have a us visa you can enter mexico <laughs> so nag uh, apply ako ng visa noon sa us to see the murals sa uh, sa ano sa Mexico hmm. Philippine artists sa Filipino artist uh, up to now favorite ko rin yung uh, yung mga um, naging prominent during the 70s yung mga figurative expressionist like Danilo Dalena uh, Dani Dale uh, Dan Dani Dalena Olive Olmedo and uh, Jaime de Guzman so ito ito yung mga works na parang pareho rin kami ng ng direction in depicting uh, realities in Philippine society. Okay. Um, second question po, this is about the art process po. So you said before, di ba, um, you like taking pictures as well. So do you actually, have you ever thought of like using, like taking pictures as in a daily life and then use those pictures as become a study for your artworks? Uh, actually, ginagamit ko din yung process na yun. Uh, pero I just use photographs as a reference, no? Uh, kasi ano na ako eh, parang I veered away from uh, painting photorealist works. Uh, kasi naisip ko naman parang ano na, photographs can do that, no? Uh, as well, no? Kaya yung laging ang question namin nung nasa art school kami na... Merong iba ko kopya ng detail sa magazine, no? Uh, wala rin yung uh, wala rin pinagkaiba dun sa photos na ikaw yung kumuha or you copied from a second secondary material and then you would crop it and then blow it up to a big uh, canvas. Pero yun nga, parang it always comes to that question uh, parang why make it big scale? Ganun. Parang when you can actually just look at it at a photograph. Kaya lang, uh, yun nga, ginagamit ko lang siya as a, a reference for yung mga details ng, ng work ko. Hi po. Um, so yung question ko lang po is, um, since nag-watercolor po kayo and drawings and painting, inisip ko lang po kung have you ever explored po since, ano na, uh, parang mas ano na yung technology, have you ever explored yung digital na form ng uh, na medium kumbaga. Mm. Uh, and also unrelated question. Um, inisip ko lang po bakit um, bakit niyo po pinili na yung mas yung everyday life yung mas ipaint niyo sa mga subjects no or sa mga paintings niyo. Yun mm. po. Thank you. Yung na mention mo pagdating sa materials, mabuti na nga lang that's a good question kasi hindi ko siya dinagdag dito sa sa presentation ko. Nung nagumpisa ko ako kasi ano talaga ako, I was a purist. Kasi since I was uh, a teenager, talagang materials ko, yun lang, pencil, paper, pastel, watercolor, tapos uh, oil on canvas. Um, iniiwasan, kahit nga yung airbrush nung una, uh, iniiwasan namin yung, nung teacher ko at ng mga classmate ko kasi feeling namin it's too uh, mechanical. Uh, but then, uh, in 2012, no uh, lumabas yung iPhone tapos nanunu uh, nanunod ako sa YouTube tapos meron ako nakita isang artist na yung artwork niya kasi may app na eh di ba from mga iPhone uh, he did an artwork uh, and then it became the cover of the New Yorker magazine ako sabi ko na fascinated ako sabi ko baka gusto ko rin subukan no So, nung nagkaroon ako ng iPhone, in-install ko kaagad yung app na yon, yung brushes app. Tapos, I tried doing it, uh, yun nga, yung finger painting. 
Tapos, yung uh, when I did my uh, yung uh, children's book uh, in 2006, yung publish, same publisher, kinausap ko, sabi ko, can we do an artwork na using digital technology? Tapos, uh, pumayag ka agad. Medyo malakas nga yung loob namin nun kasi hindi kami sanay sa, sa digital technology and digital painting and printing. Tapos, uh, yung, yung art director suggested, sabi niya, uh, Emong, lalabas na yung iPad, abangan mo na lang. Mas malaki yung screen kesa dun sa, sa iPhone. Tapos sabi ko, oh sige, di umorder, ano pa kami, umorder pa kami sa, sa States. Tapos, with that uh, technology, nakipag-collaborate ako with the um, writer and poet, si Bim Nadera, uh, kasi centennial ni Jose Rizal. So he came up with um, a, a series of poems, Rizal Pabeto. No, yun, so yung 28 letters in the Philippine al alphabet, ginawa niya ng po poetry. Tapos uh, sabi ko, sige, gagawa ko ng illustration. Uh, ang idea ko was to come up with uh, yung letras i figuras. Uh, kasi that time, uh, ano rin siya, uh, yung art form na yun, yun din yung uso nung panahon ni Jose Rizal, yung letras i figuras. Pero ang medium naman, instead of oil on canvas, yung iPad. Kaya lang, sinubukan ko, uh, nung una nag finger paint, nag finger paint, naliri pang ang ginagamit ko eh. Sabi nung isang artist, sabi niya, may stylus naman. Sabi niya, subukan mo. Kaya lang, napahamak ako kasi naging detailed lalo yung work ko eh. Kasi uh, masyadong, ano siya, uh, parang you can really do uh, fine lines using the stylus. Uh, kaya lang, uh, nangapa ako. No? Uh, hindi kasi ako sanay even mag-photoshop yung mga layering. Pero nung natutunan ko, bumilis na yung, yung proseso. Sa tagal nung project, no, from using the iPad, inabutan na ako ng iPad 2. <laughs> tagal kasi. <laughs> Yun. Tapos na-publish namin yung, yung book. No. Magandang experience din kasi uh, nung ginagawa ko yun, wala na akong study. No. Kasi pag nagka, if you make mistakes, no, you, you can just ano, uh, delete. No. Ta, so yun yung experience ko in digital. Pero... Bumabalik pa rin ako dun sa, ano, sa, sa traditional. And then, uh, ano nga yung, what's your next, uh, ayong follow-up mo? Ay, yung everyday life, oo. Um, kasi, ito nga yung napansin ko kanina dahil kasi ako, ano, uh, very western trained. Tapos yung sa art school namin, uh, we're all discussing yung mga art movements uh, abroad, ganyan. Tapos, uh, yung kami mga uh, classmates ko sa art school noon, we came up with uh, na yung isang book, yung Conversations in Philippine Art, written by uh, Sid Reyes, and it was published by the Cultural Center of the Philippines. Yung isang interview doon, uh, doon sa writer na si Rod Paras Perez, uh, he mentioned na, na kung maari sana, parang you don't, necessarily have to follow yung mga current art trends. No? Yung kung ano yung nangyayari abroad. Kasi pag sumunod ka doon, uh, pag natapos na yung tide, no? uh, kasi ito naman mga art trends na to are all dictated by the art centers uh, abroad. ba? Diba? So pag nagbago na sila ng, ng trend, and then you are still doing the same thing uh, here, Uh, in in Manila or kahit sa ang mga parts in the Philippines, parang may ma ano ka, may iwan ka. So uh, sa akin, yung yung sincerity ng mga artworks, uh, parang ano lang sa akin, yung tatlong bagay lang. It's either you became universal, uh, autobiographical, or uh, homegrown, no? So Kasi yung sensibilities mo as an artist, talagang you are molded by uh, your surroundings. Ganun. So, syempre, pagka sa ASEAN countries, pag nagkita-kita kayo, uh, i-share mo, mo yung experiences mo dito sa, sa ano natin, dun sa country natin. So, that's why I decided, sabi ko, i-depict yung, 
yung everyday life na that's really uh, close to my heart and uh, it has yung soul.